Hello, welcome to Sound and Fairy Book Reviews. As usual, I'm Tina. Today I'm doing a book review of Andre Norton's The Year of the Unicorn. This is a book from 1965 from Ace Books. It's a classic fantasy, not a classic science fiction. This book is a first edition. <laughs> I got it at a used bookstore back in the summer, I think. Uh, it has cool pictures in it. I got it from a used bookstore, of course. I've got like pictures. Let me find another one. I don't know if why it, this one's not that cool, but anyway. Yeah, so I'm very excited to have that. that. Uh, except that <laughs> this book, <laughs> this book messed me over. Uh, so I'm doing this trick or treat a thon, and uh, I picked the prompts obviously ahead of time. And then I read the back of this book, and I was like, okay, this sounds like this. And it did not match the prompt at all. So I didn't get a bingo. And I was like, nah, but that's okay. Also, I'm not going to do my classic sci fi bingo for this book because it's not a sci fi. I guess I just messed up. I'm sorry, everyone. I'm sorry. But I am going to blame the back of the book. Uh, I'm going to read it to you and you tell me if it sounds like it's a sci-fi fantasy or not because I'm pretty sure it sounds like a sci-fi fantasy to me. So, to pay an unearthly tribute, 13 must leave with the wear riders. 13 torn from their homeland to ride with illusion and darkness to travel the unmapped lands with the nomads who are more than men and less than human. That was the price to be paid for an unholy alliance without which the homeland would have been lost. But was the price worth paying? Gillen, who became one of the Thirteen, was to find out, and in the finding, find a lost land, a forgotten world, and a super science challenge. Andre Norton's Year of the Unicorn is a brand new novel of swordsmanship and scientific sorcery. Does that not sound to you like sci-fi-ish at all? Sci-fi you know, super science challenge, um, scientific sorcery. It's not, <laughs> it has nothing to do with sci-fi at all. Uh, yeah, that's fine. It's a good, it was a good classic fantasy novel. So I'm just going to give you a little review about it because I read it might as well. The best thing about this novel for me was a unique main character. Gillen is not, and I'm probably going to tell her Jillian at some point, just forgive me. Gillen is not what I expected for the, a 1960s main character in a fantasy novel. First of all, she's a woman. Second, she reads like a woman today, so much that I almost forgot at times she was written 60 years ago. And third, she was a person of color. I was like, wow, wow, I, okay. <laughs> the story is almost a romantic as we have a woman in an arranged marriage with a sorcerer or shapeshifter guy. Of course, their relationship developed into something deeper as the book goes on. One thing about Gillen is that she's not forced into this, something that I always find gross. I don't like stories about arranged marriages. I find them like icky, you know what I mean? Like obviously it's it never it's never to the woman's advantage. <laughs> Anyway, but she willingly enters this arrangement because she wants excitement in her life. She's been living in a... So basically, she was found... If I can remember. She was found on a ship during this war. Um, so she's taken to this monastery. She grows up there. She was, I think, seven or eight or something when this happened. She lives there. So she has an option that she could, I guess, become a nun in the monastery. We're not really sure what kind of religion this is at all. Um, but she's like, that's boring. <laughs> I don't want that. So she actually endeavors and, and pulls off this very good swap with another person to, I'm not going to spoil too much to like get into this kind of arrangement. So it was, uh, it was really good. She very much takes charge. It's definitely not, she's definitely not a main character, a woman main character who's passive, who is kind of like has to be rescued or things happen to her, which happens a lot in books of this era uh no she's she is in control of the entire story and i really really liked that i thought that was fantastic that's how the main character should be anyway uh the world building i found was quite light though as i was like why are these two countries at war are they countries are they continents i don't know we never see the war <laughs> we don't know anything really about it um obviously it's kind of a medieval fantasy so there's kings and stuff we don't know who the rulers are we don't know anything um, yeah, the, the backstory, I was like, okay. Uh, the magic also often works in the deus ex machina way, which was kind of dumb, like, oh, I need to do something. Gillen's like, I need to do this. And then the thing she needs shows up. Oh, I can do this now. I'm like, all right. Uh, this book, this book though, this book though does move considerably faster than other well, more well-known well fantasy novels, <clears throat> Lord of the Rings, and it's engaging and interesting. It is also a lot shorter. <laughs> uh, Gillen carries the story, as I said, 100%, and the, but the book is a lot of her kind of wandering around on her own. Those parts, a bit dry. <laughs> 
The book might be hard to get into as well if you aren't prepared for the writing style. It's very archaic in its prose and while the dialogue is generally a bit more modern, there's some repetition and I could have used a bit more sexual tension between the, the you know, Gillen and then her intended, this guy that uh, is um, apparently attractive and he's a shapeshifter. I mean, okay, romanticy, romanticy. Overall, this is a short little story that is great if you're a reader who likes classic fantasy but wants one where women aren't damseled, has a bit of a love story, and is less about battles and more about a woman coming into her own power. I mean, I, I had some critiques about it, but I did really enjoy it. I, I thought it was good. And um, yeah, it's not going on my favorite shelf, but definitely a book I will be keeping also because it's a first edition. <laughs> this this cover has nothing to do with the book. I don't, who, who, did, who did this? Who did this? I said it was Ace, right? Yeah, Ace Books. Who did the cover? Do we know? Jack Gonham. Jack Gohan. Gohan? Gohan? I don't know how you say G-A-U-G-H-A-N. Jack, did you even read the book, man? Anyway, uh, thanks for watching, and um, I will be back next month with an actual classic sci-fi. Actually, you know what? I probably won't. I think I might actually read the second Doom book from the 90s. <laughs> but I promise, in December, I will be doing one of these, you know, one of these guys. Maybe I'll read a Jack Vance, my boy. Maybe I'll read um, The Infinite Battle. That sounds cool. Uh, didn't I read this already? No, I didn't read that. Uh, what's this one? Ooh, next of kin. I already read this person. There's a bunch up here I can read. I'll, I'll pick. I'll pick something. Did I show you what I found at a used bookstore? I don't think I did. <clears throat> so I went to this. I went to this like Goodwill store because we were waiting for my kids like thing in the summer uh, to start, and we were just kind of wandering around the town. And look what I found for like two dollars. Andre Norton again, Forerunner, the second venture. I need to find the first venture. Look at that cover. It's so cool. I found this book for like two bucks. It's like in pristine condition. It's awesome. I also don't like this book, but it was 50 cents and it's the first edition of Weave World. It's on sale for like a hundred bucks on eBay. So I'm like, I'll keep this thing around. Maybe, maybe I'll sell it someday, but it's a very beautiful cover. Like, look at this cover. It's lovely. I just, I just thought this book was incredibly boring and I DNF'd it at probably like, I forced myself to get about this far into it. And then finally I was just like, fuck it. I'm done. <laughs> anyway, I won't be reading that. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not a Clive Barker fan. I have read three others of his books and I didn't like a single one of them. I just don't really like his style. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why this video turned into a Clive Barker discussion, but um, yeah, sorry all you Barker buds out there. I'm not a Barker bud. I don't bark up that tree. Okay, I'm done. Bye.